My name is Jules. I fight for the far north. I live in West Auckland, and I am the Tangata Whenua coach here today uh, for Huiu. And my favourite colour is yellow because it's a happy colour. Kia ora. Um, Ronya, do you want to go? Okay. Oh, okay. Can I shuffle to this way, please. Hi, I'm Gabby, and I am from Wellington. Um, and I am one of the editors of the documentary that we're going to be watching today. And my favourite colour is blue. Kia ora. Um, kia ora everyone, my name's Oliver. I'm a creative director with Bruce Slava, so I've been working with Gabby. Um, and yeah, my favorite color is also yellow, in fact. So I think that yellow got the yellow bow tie. Uh, good morning, my name's Thomas Stewart, and I'm from Christchurch. I'm also from Bruce Savanda, the video team here. Um, my favorite color would be uh, red, blue, or black, depending on the day. <laughs> Hello, I'm John Spencer. I have a servant of the team of Mrs. Spencer, and my favorite color is the same blue. Thank you. 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 Thank um, and my favorite color is also very close. What was your, your co chairs? Are you co chairs? <laughs> and to the, the board, it's lovely to have you all here in person. Uh, called Sylvia Purdy, uh, Takawingawa. I work in uh, climate change strategy and also I work as a professional supervisor within the community sector. So that's what we're 
And um, yeah, it's awesome to have you all here. So if anything doesn't go well with the tech, it's all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if it all runs well, it's also all on me. <laughs> no, just joking. And um, we've got uh, oh, Valerie. Valerie, come in. Valerie, Valerie, Valerie like come and introduce yourself. <laughs> going straight in the deep end. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're just wow. doing we're just doing a quick um intro and yeah, if you'd yeah, like yeah. to share your favorite color that would also be lovely oh Kira, i'm um Valerie Williams, i'm brown and um and my favorite color um rainbow <laughs> okay so we're going to pass to our um Belfano online i'm just going to um, pass to my top left, which is Natalia, and then perhaps you can pick someone straight up to you, Natalia. Over to you. Oh, kia ora. Uh, kia ora koutou katoa. Um, ko Natalia Sexton tokoingua. He uri tēnei Ngāti Kahununu ki Wairoa me 
Rumai Wahine Hoki. Um, absolute pleasure to be here today. Don't hold it against me, I'm a funder. Um, I'm from Weave Working Together, so we're a collaboration of eight philanthropic family foundations, um, but very passionate about the kaupapa of Huye and the wonderful mahi that you do here for our communities, whānau hapa and iwi. Uh, so I'll pass the rako over to Cheyenne Hiki. Um, oh, just a big mahi and thank you to all the kaimahi and bringing this all together. I'm sad I can't be in the room with you today. Uh, I'm a trustee for Huiye. Um, my favourite colour is yellow. I'll pass over to Ben. Yara. My name is Ben. I'm based here in Wellington. I'm one of the board um, member nominees for today's AGM. So it's um really lovely to see all of you and meet you all. It's um exciting and I'm looking forward to to the event today. Thank you. I'll pass on to Tim. Uh, uh, I am from Tapu Harakiki Community Collective Manawatu, so we're based here in Palmerston North. Mm -hmm. And my favorite color is yellow. Mm -hmm. oh, and the next person on my screen is Catherine. Now, making a week here, Excuse me. Call Catherine Pete Tokoenga. He tanga to Tiriti Aho, based in Utatahi. And um, I'm involved with Network Waitangi Ototahi, and also I co-chair a little, well, rather large group now, of uh, third sector organisations in Christchurch that sit around six week weekly and chew the fat. So um, that's another connection with Huye. Uh, pass it over to Barbara. Uh, kia ora, Barbara Wallace here. I'm um, a trustee with NZ Navigator Trust. Um, uh, we look after the NZ Navigator tool, community net, Aotearoa, digital stuff we love. Uh, we do di digital tools for community organisations. Thanks. Passing over to Natalie. Okay. Um, Liz, would you mind coming off mute and introduce yourself? Thank you. Sure. Kia ora koutou katoa. Um, call us Davies Te Huingua. Um, I'm from Social Link in Tauranga Moana, and it's great to be here. And hello to Soy, Rochelle, and Ronya. <laughs> and my favourite colour um, is purple, feminist, and um, the colours of Social Link. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'll pass on to Rula. Nami Hinui, Kiura Koto Katua, Ko Rula Telahma Toko Inwa, Ki Ti Noho o Ki Otipoti. I am one of the nominees uh, today. Um, not sure about the introductions, but I'm also a a trustee for Interpreting New Zealand and a trustee for Refugee um, Support Group here in Dunedin. Um, I'm also part of the Ethnic Advisory Group for uh, English Language Partners. Uh, that's what I do on the side of my uh, day job as a public servant. Uh, my colors are uh, black, white, green, and red. <laughs> And I would pass it on to uh, Nola. Kia ora, I'm Nola Fox. Um, I apologise for not being having my camera up, but um, house is in disrepair at the moment. Um, I'm from Sunny Foxton, and I represent Wildlife Foxton Trust. Um, and I also am on local Te Awaho Community Board. Um, for council as well as the Manor to History Trust. Um, and I just love what you do in governance issues. Thanks. I'll pass to Annalise, I think, sitting there. Uh, kia ora koutou, uh, ko Elif Tokoingawa, 
um, in Noho and Oho Kite Whanganui Atara. Um, I'm Annalise, I'm based in Wellington, and I do some volunteering for Huye. Kia ora. Um, and I'll pass to Alicia. Oh, she's pretty. Kia ora, Annalise. I think Alicia's written his. Um... All right, okay, all good. I... Is there anyone else on the room? I think. Oh, that's everyone. Yeah. Okay. Everyone, yeah. Um, well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, we just we just had someone join us. I'm not sure if you'd like to quickly introduce yourself. We've just done a round of introductions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so I'm so happy you're here today because I was just scanning looking for you. So that's yeah, why I, I, went, I was running late and then I went to the wrong church. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Welcome. We're all here. Okay. Um, well, thank you, everyone. I think probably Green was the winner of the day. I wasn't particularly counting, but um, it's beautiful to have you all here from your various organisations and um, places where you belong. Um, thank you for your support for William Community Arts and all. Um, so we are now going to move into the next session. I'm not sure who's introducing it. Yeah, you can. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Uh, so what we're going to do now is show you this fantastic, uh, I think it's a 12-minute documentary, uh, and then I'm going to have a little chat with um, Oliver and John, who were our filmmakers, um, about the process of what they did and the following months that we've done. So we're super excited for this, Mahi. Uh, they've also done some other work along the way, and there's so many stories, and we were talking with them, uh, Ronya and I, last week about uh, how we need to do tell more of the story. So we've got so much content now, so there's a whole lot more to tell. Uh, but we wanted a, a just a short documentary that would demonstrate a little bit about who Who Year was, some of the community groups that we were working with, um, and some one major challenge, which I think you will work out very quickly when you watch it. So we'll watch it first. Uh, it's 12 minutes. Um, Ronya is just well, welcome back to our Zoomers. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm very good to have you all here. Thank you so much for having us this afternoon. My name is John, and um, I am the managing director and one of the producers of the documentary. Um, so I'm just going to ask you a few remarks about um, the work we've done and some of the things we've learned along the way. But before I go any further, I just want to acknowledge my colleagues. Um, up, um, <laughs> this is. Um, Gabby um, and Oliver and Thomas. Um, it's, we've been on this journey together, and I think um, I'm really proud of all the work they've done. And if we can give them one more round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I just want to make, um, I'm just going to keep this short and sweet, but maybe I'm just going to focus my remarks on three points, maybe. I'll start with um, the relationship we've had with Huya to produce this work. And then I'll probably just talk about the process of making this film and finally maybe some of the observations of what we learned along the way. Um, regarding the relationship, I suppose we kind of got to know each other earlier this year around March when I thought, you know, these people do really important work, but it's not really clear or it's not really easy to understand what it is they do. So what we sought to do through these, um, this documentary and some of the other work we've done is some put a sort of human face to the work that this organisation does. And I think what you've seen in this film is that we've gone in there, we've gone beyond the white paper, we've gone beyond the annual reports, and we've sort of said, what is the work that they do? So that leads me to my second point, which is some of the lessons we've learned um, during the process. Um, so maybe I should just start with what the process was. As you've seen, who we are covers a lot of ground. Um, some of the stuff happens um, here in Wellington, a lot of stuff happens on the um, on Afanui East Coast. Um, so they have a very broad presence. And one of the most interesting things I think we learned is you would think that this is a very huge organization with you know, abundance of staff and abundance of resources. But what that goes to show is that there's an outsized impact for such a small group of people. And I think I really want to give a shout out to Ramya and Rochelle, uh, Katerina and Saha, because the work they do and the impact they generate is immense. And I think within the resources that they work with, that requires especially So what we did then is we went, we followed along, 
And I want to actually congratulate and actually um, thank um, the, the Ken Mahi and who we are because going around your daily work with a camera over your shoulder is not easy. <laughs> but as you saw in the film, they did it with a great plum, and for that, we're grateful. That leads me to my last <laughs> point, which is what observations and what lessons have been learned in the process. Um, well, I think I've touched on the point of the sweep of the work that we, you know, who we are, uh, they've generated an outsized impact. And I think in cutting the footage and sort of narrowing it down to a key, um, you know, a, a selection of points, we were quite amazed by how much they do. And one of the things you would see, for example, is Ronya tugging the children along to an evening function, you know, Katerina and leaving their families to go to these communities in rather remote and far flung places. That is the level of commitment that, you know, the team here does. And for that, I think that's something that's deserving of admiration. Mm -hmm. The other thing also I think that's interesting, you know, that we learn about who we are, is the centrality of relationships to their work. Um, I think the way that Rochelle describes the mahi of the organization is that, you know, their mahi is to support and to lift up the work of others. And we hope that the film demonstrates that, that, you know, it's not so much that who we are sort of jumps in and sort of, you know, copies and pastes solutions or imposes ideas, but I think shares experience. And an interesting thing is that they share that experience with the people they work with. And I think that human touch, um, you know, and those relationships they cultivate, that is something that we found really interesting. And we hope that the film captures that as well. Um, I don't think there's much more that's useful to say. I hope that you found the film informative. I hope you found it useful. And at least good to see you. Cordrian, who's here as well, who also featured in the film. Um, your name escapes me, but it was good to see you in the film. Um, but um, I'm grateful um, to who we are. The team and I are grateful for um, the opportunity to share in your experience. We are appreciative that an organization like who we are exists, and we're really grateful to be here today. If any of you have any comments or questions about the film, or um, we'll be keen to talk um, over um, Kai. But thank you so much, and I wish you all a very good day and good afternoon. <laughs>
am first. So thankfully, Sarah has written notes for us because <laughs> she's the brains and I'm the brawn. Um, so I, I again want to give a heartfelt thanks to our Puya team. They are small but mighty. They're incredible. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I cry that means I really mean it, just so everyone knows. Um, so welcome to our two new kaimahi, um, beautiful wahine, newish, <laughs> newish, um, Katharina and Terrell. And um, we did feel well Abby earlier this year, um, who I unfortunately didn't get a chance to meet because she had left the team by the time I came on board, um, kind of at the time I came on board. The um want to say uh, best wishes to Zaka after leaving us after so long. You um I've already heard through the grapevine what a big hole you have left. It's incredible work, and of course we cannot forget our Ronya, <laughs> who keeps everything moving whilst our wonderful Rochelle does the amazing things that she does. So a, a heartfelt thanks, a huge thanks from us at the board. You guys are amazing, you guys are incredible. I can't praise you enough. Um, so I'll stop saying all the words about about you, but just know that I love you and I might even give you a hug. Although, I don't know if it's a big thing. <laughs> no, I'm not a hugger. I might even give you a kiss. Um, maybe not with lips. <laughs> okay. Also, want to give a massive thanks to our funders, um, DIA, Todd Foundation, J.R. McKenzie, Trust, and the Wellington and Community Fund. Without you, we wouldn't be able to do the money that we can, that we're doing. You guys are also incredible. And um, I hope you just heard also the work that we have been doing around that funding advocacy. I'm sure we got some messages through today. Kia ora. <laughs> Over to Sarah. Um, thank you. Yeah, so thank you, everyone. I um, just wanted to talk to you about everything that Jules has said. And um, I um, also want to thank our amazing board. Um, our board is voluntary and we take time out of our busy lives, all of us have busy lives, um, uh, to come together. And the picture there is a photo oh, um, of us at Orongo Marae, um, Orongo Mai Marae, um, in March this year. And we um, brought together the team. We welcomed uh, Soi Pua back, let me put your hand up, Soi Pua, and the amazing Ginny um, in our last year. Um, who have made an incredible contribution already. I want to um, to thank Andrea, um, to Bill, who is not here, he's in Japan at his daughter's wedding, um, and to Cheyenne, who's online, um, whose flight got cancelled this morning, um, uh, for their ongoing work. And we really also want to thank and farewell, and we'll have time to do that um, in a bit, um, Prava, for your amazing contribution also. Um, and we're looking forward to a process very soon where we'll be um, welcoming a new Tsumanga uh, board member um, once Prabha has um, moved on to her awesome adventures. So um, I guess the thing that I just wanted to share with people as well and what we've been focused on um, recently is our TTDT relationship framework and our co-governance model. Um, that's one of the three strategic um, priorities that we came to when we um, all met together. So if we go to the next, yeah. Just the one before that, actually. Sorry. So, what I was going to say is, we came together um, at all my guy in March um, with Paimahi, and we, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, thank you, um, to refresh our vision. I think our vision had not been um, refreshed since we began, uh, it'll be 10 years next year. Oh, why? Can't go. I'm just going to try Shall we,
Um, so let's just and we're going to pause now. Rochelle. Rochelle. Kia ora. Thank you, Rochelle. Uh, sorry, we're going to pause because Zaka needs to go back to work because now he's a public servant. He's accountable for the time. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to run out the door, but um, we didn't want to let him do that without um, giving an absolute heartfelt for the years that you've spent with who he is, Zaka. Uh, we've absolutely loved you having part of our team. No, we will really miss you, but you have absolutely left a legacy of uh, challenge, of fun, of um, uh, some anger, some um, <laughs> excitement, some um, some just new ways of thinking that you've really embedded in the mahi that we do, uh, and we we have loved working with you. We know that this is just tairera and you're not really going anywhere, you're just down the road and we'll be talking to you and seeing you all the time because we can't quite let you go that much, but we're letting you go from here. Um, and we're wishing you all the best, heartfelt wishes for uh, this next part of your journey. You're going to go a long way and we're really excited about where that will be. Uh, thank you for coming to bring all your intelligence and uh, your wisdom and your lived experience into the Gwea space. Um, and we've just got a little gift here for you. That's why we couldn't let you go without it. Thank you. I'm gonna run, but I good video. <laughs> um, I keep telling people I felt like the two years was a master's degree in understanding just a lot. But that anger is not going to go in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's anger, I'll just say a little bit about it. Also, <laughs> <laughs> so this poem we're here, my brother is a beautiful artist down in Muriaku uh, and it's Upland and it's a it's Kahurangi and it's from West Westland. And uh, the Wairua spoke to me when I was looking at it because I was trying to get a fit that would be fair, you know, this personality, <laughs> and it spoke to me, and that was the one that we picked. I don't think I picked it up. And it's been blessed. <laughs> We go to Wellington FC on Wednesday yeah. Yeah. where we celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right, we need to get back up in here. Oh, okay. You just finish your thing. Yeah, okay. just finish your thing, though. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That demonstrates the importance of relationships with you. Um, so, um, as I was saying, we met together as a team and we really focused on um, getting to know each other, functioning and refreshing our vision. There's a piece of paper that would have been on the seats when you sat down, which has this information on it. But um, our vision is now Kia Mahi Tangi Nā Tangata Kia Pōwai, uh, flourishing communities. And so we really felt that that was the focus of Huria is community and it is people in community. And so um, that felt like a beautiful uh, moe moe, um for our organisation. And then we talked about what is our purpose, our mission, our um, our kaupapa. Uh, and uh, these words were um, gifted through our, um, uh, I'm going to call him our kaumatua on our board, um, uh, Bill. Hui e te marama e, hui e te oranga e, from knowledge comes well-being. And I guess we expressed that through um, this statement, which we spent a lot of time thinking about, and I think represents the beautiful kaupapa that we um, have up here. To uh, we weave collective voices and drive equitable systems change so that communities, hapu, and iwi can do what they do best. Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to thank everybody for that beautiful process that we went through to come to that, and I feel like we um, we did well to represent. Uh, yes, so we've got um, uh, an, an acknowledgement there at the bottom, um, and that's when we'll uh, think as well about where that, um, where that uh, kuku that, um, came from and was gifted to us. Can I just read that out? Yeah, I think it's important to always acknowledge where the kuku came from as out of respect and the mana of that whānau. Thank you. So we acknowledge iha kara karaitia ngā mokopono of reti mana, te kōrau karaitiana as a source of this tautara para. 
it was given to us on the um, proviso that we always acknowledge the children. Thank you, Andrea. What would I do without you, Andrea? <laughs> Thank you. Um, if we go to the next slide, please. Um, and so then we also focused on what would our three strategic priorities um, be. And so um, I think Zaka actually just like, said it beautifully in the video about how we're supporting communities to um, access funding and to navigate the system while at the same time we're trying to change the system. So our first um, priority there around advocating for change to the funding system so that funding better responds to community, parking and EV needs and aspirations. Um, and the second one there around building capability and connections across and between communities, Hapu and Iwi. And the third one around taking the next steps in our TDT journey, um, both reflecting that and reaching out. So that's our internal processes and our processes more community. So, um, yeah, thank you. Um, that will take us into our 10 year anniversary next year. Okay, next, I'm um, Rochelle. Uh, thanks, Sarah and Jules. That's great. Um, <laughs> it's important to um, help people kind of understand the transition as we've transitioned to the new vision and mission and the new strategic priorities. Um, you know, as we look back over the previous nine or so years, uh, you know, we had had the same kind of vision and mission, and it was really time for a change. The world and Aotearoa has transformed in that time. So it's awesome that we could step through into something different. Um, so uh, my job is to uh, talk you through a little bit about what we've done. It's kind of impossible. And every year I stand up here and try to sum it up. I think um, the documentary um, is about as close as we can get. We worked really hard. The team has done so many edits for us. <laughs> um, feedback from us and thank you for uh, that. Um, because it's incredibly difficult to talk about who we are and what we do. Um, and you would have heard me on the video talk about helping the helpers, you know, at the front line um, of our response um, in Aotearoa of well-being, of social cohesion, um, of relationship is, the, is community groups, um, marae and iwi, at the forefront of that is that. The majority of it is voluntary, so 90% of it is voluntary. Uh, so how we've worked at Kuiye is we have a focus on those voluntary and smaller and medium community organisations because they're the ones that are not resourced to do the kind of mahi that we do. So they're struggling to find information, to find resourcing, um, to find networks. Uh, often they're feeling quite isolated um, and quite buried down in the mahi um, with an absolute passion in their hearts to serve their communities. So we come in in that space. So um, I'm just going to give you a brief overview um, of what we do and then some of the changes that we're trying to um, achieve at Huiye. So uh, the four ways that we add value, and this comes not from us, it comes actually from the external evaluation that we did this year. So we went out to stakeholders, we did it two years ago as well, asking them, like, what do you see as valuable um, that Huiye does for both your organisation and across the community. So they talked about um, providing information, knowledge and insights. So helping community groups access things, for example, like government information. Um, so really networking, building networks, both um, across and within the sector and then across multiple sectors into government, into philanthropic funding, into business. Um, strengthening, so we help those community groups um, do uh, build their own capacity, we give resourcing, we've done the whole Kotia program uh, and we've done some CEO support um, and then collaborative advocacy, so speaking on behalf of the sector, so we get invites into groups that other people don't get, so we get to sit at government advisory groups and um, speak to boards and speak into philanthropic um, funding um, and actually bring the voice of the sector, bring the needs of the sector forward uh, in a way that people don't even get an opportunity to sit at those tables, but also uh, they don't have time to do that. They're so busy working at the community level, whereas we don't deliver frontline services down into communities, so that gives us that capacity to be able to do that and speak on their behalf. So uh, here are just some quotes. I will read them out for the Zoomers online. Uh, about what we've delivered. So um, thank you for making us feel seen and sharing our common challenges and self-doubt and encouraging us to raise our voice. 
We will make noise. We will occupy the spaces to help and represent our communities. Namihi nui e mai. So this is uh, ma, e ma. So this is um, from when we had Vulei last year um, and took him around the motu. Uh, the second quote is, Huia has established robust and genuine connections with community groups across Aotearoa, which gives them the ability to advocate effectively and exert strategic influence at a government level. It's always nice to know that um, the people that we represent see that we are doing that in a good way mm -hmm. um, and that we are actually uh, achieving some shift and change in people's hearts and minds. Uh, the third quote is, I feel that Huye provides a voice for organisations to say the things that feel too risky to say directly to funders, and that's vital. So we're in a, we're in a, it's taken us quite a few years to get to this position, but we're in a comfortable enough position that we're able to challenge some of the funding systems that operate. If you're a small community group, you don't have that capacity or ability to be able to do that because you're at such risk. If you lost your funding, you'd be losing all your staff. <laughs> Amazingly, we have fantastic funders that have seen us through this challenging process and continue to fund us and not put restrictions on us. And they are also ones who are also working to shift the system themselves, and they've already done that. So it's a really awesome match for us to have those funding partnerships. Mm -hmm. And going forward, in terms of searching for funding, what I what my focus has been on is those kind of organisations mm -hmm. who want to really be in partnership with us, who want to support our mahi and not trying to fit, get us to fit in a little box that we don't fit into. So um, some of the greatest achievements that we've done, um, so these slides will be online, I'm not going to go through them all, but the four areas are advocacy, government relationships, sector support, and raising profile of the sector in Hui. Uh, so some of the highlights for me was certainly bringing out Vule from nonprofitaf.com uh, last year, and we partnered with Dunedin Community Builders and Volunteering New Zealand on that. Uh, so we took him to... Um, to Dunedin and we had a, a parliamentary event in Wellington and in Auckland. Um, we took and we got him in front of funders. Uh, we had the parliamentary event because we wanted to bring community groups into that space with funders, with government. Uh, so in that space where they felt affirmed that the mahi that they do is valuable, is recognised. Uh, they loved hearing from him. He's hilarious. He's lots of fun. Uh, I had the um, great pleasure of traveling with him around the motu as well um, and we had some nice little things uh, that we got to actually go out and see some of the country so it was really awesome it's the age-old thing um, and one of the feedback came and said uh, surely there's perfect people in New Zealand who could deliver this message which there is and those people have spoken for many many years and has not have not shifted anything so there's something about bringing someone from another jurisdiction, another country that actually starts to kind of shift people. Uh, one of the quotes we got in our, um, uh, from feedback from that was that two funders actually shifted to an equitable process as a result of listening to Boo. So that was really exciting and really affirming for us. We knew that we shifted the dial through that process. Uh, some of the other things that we've done is we um, have a collaboration, there's five community organisations and we worked on election 2023 together, we put together, uh, as well as who we are doing our own election manifesto, we put together a joint uh, challenge for funding to government, uh, to, sorry, to ministers. Um, and to um, political parties. We met with some of the MPs um, and the wanting to be MPs before the election, uh, and then that mahi will continue. Uh, so that's us, Philanthropy New Zealand, Volunteering New Zealand, Social Link, uh, and Liz is on, um, online today, um, and Belong Aotearoa. So those five organisations came together. Um, we originally funded it by BAU, but now we've got some funders on board to help us do the next lot, which is start to do media coverage as well. Uh, the reality is these things do not happen in a vacuum. It takes resource, intense resource. So this has been Zucker and I spending a lot of time on this, as well as the other um, CEs and representatives from the other five communities. This kind of level of collaboration, and even though we're all friends and we all get on, it took quite a lot of work to actually come together and form something that we could agree on and a shared vision uh, that we could take. So we will continue to push with the new government, um, continue to have those conversations with them. Um, so that's another thing that we did. Uh, we followed up the research that we've done in 2021, and we've just repeated that research now in 2023 in that um, the last financial year so it was published in this financial year but 
uh, in the last financial year, we collected data two years on. Uh, when we collected in 2021, we didn't just collect the data and release a PDF report and then, you know, Bob's your uncle. Uh, we did a lot of work after that with that research. So we did some white papers, we did some webinars, we uh, put up a community dashboard so people could look through the data themselves. We did some visualisation. Um, and so we've just continued to do that and we, we are in the process of doing that with the research from this year as well. Uh, and this kind of thing does work. It does shift the dial a little bit. Everything is just contributing. This is actually how John knows about us and um, reached out to us because he was involved in the white paper um, drafting as well. Uh, the other thing that I really loved was the Tato Tato podcast. So well-being of uh, CEs uh, is paramount in our sector. Everyone's extremely tired. Uh, a lot of people are burnt out. People are leaving uh, and not coming back, going for other roles. So um, it is a, it's a major invisible kind of um, situation that's going on. Mm -hmm. And I've been mindful of that both for myself uh, and for the other CEs that I engaged with over these past few years. So we started to do um, some wellbeing things online and then the Tato Tato podcast was the idea of one-on-one -on -one interviews with community leaders talking about their own order and well-being, that they could talk about their own journey, what they learned, what they've done wrong, what they want to do differently, uh, to help people feel not so alone, because there's a real sense of isolation in roles like mine. Uh, and then the Hoa grant writing program, which we have tried to uh, end so many times, we have sort of put it on hold for the next wee while, but um, small community groups cannot write their own funding applications. That's the bottom line. So we have some fantastic grant writers, Emily and Alice, uh, in the room. Um, this has been a way for us to firstly connect and really provide something practical for small community groups, but it's also really amazingly built our profile. Like we have reached out and it's really built our um, Mima Whanauna Tanga network, our formal network, because people just want practical things. Like you can um, you can talk at people, but at the end of the day, you just need someone to help you. Like the theory is not enough in terms of practice. Uh, so that's enough for me. We'll put these up online. Um, and then finally, we'll just talk about the B. We, what came back in the evaluation is that the team at Huia are being the change that we want to see. So we talk about change, but also we are working on being that practically ourselves. So we've just got some of these examples which came through in the evaluation. So this is, again, other people looking at us in um, rather than us telling you what we think we're doing. <laughs> uh, so the first one is using a TDT uh, relationship framework across the organisation and ongoing commitment to being a better partner and ally. Uh, developing one funding application and reporting approach for all funders. So uh, we're really pushing this. And in fact, probably before I go, uh, we'll be releasing that online so you can all see. So it's one global funding application once a year for, for who year. Uh, we decide that we want to change this funding systems ourselves. We've done so much talking about how and what it might look different, like helping funders understand but instead we're just going to do it ourselves and, and enforce that. We have a number of other organisations keen to also do this, so do reach out to us if you're keen to also participate in this, because if we get a bit of a groundswell, then it's effectively going to enforce funding, funders to work with us in a different way, and that's what we're going to do. Um, so we've already written it. Thank you, and thank you to Emily for your help. Um, so the third thing is being the change is using social procurement for better social outcomes by supporting Māori and Pacific suppliers. So uh, from 1st of July this year, we have a priority for Māori suppliers uh, in the people that we're using. So you might um, not understand about how a small charity works, but we have many, many people that we bring on as suppliers. So we have... Um, we have a translator, we have someone who works works with us culturally, we have uh, a designer, we have um, people who do proofreading, we do um, so many people that we work with. And so the priority is to firstly find a Māori supplier if we can, if we can't then to find a Pacifica supplier, and then if we're not able to find that person then to look for someone else. So really being um, focused and committed to that so that we're actually putting our dollars somewhere where we that we believe is the right thing. Uh, and the last one is stopping offering free advice to government and business to shift the expectation that the sector works for free. 
So we have many, many government agencies come to us uh, and officials. Uh, we have ministers. We have um, businesses coming to us. We have provided a lot of advice for free, a lot. <laughs> and we're not going to do that for free anymore. Uh, if we were PwC or we were Deloitte or if we were whoever else, uh, we, were to, <laughs> we would be sending a bill for that. So um, going forward, that's the focus that we is going to be doing. We're happy to still provide that um, knowledge and expertise that we hold, but also we're valuing it ourselves now. So uh, so that's it for me. Um, and there's a few numbers. We'll just put this online. It's just because we have to report back to numbers to charity services that so we do have a few numbers there. But the main things um, is that uh, the number of community groups is 291 uh, that we estimate. We don't just dream this up. We actually work really hard to come up with this number of all the people that we've engaged with through the year. But for us, it's never about numbers. So it's like for every organisation or individual that we engage with, there's all the people around them that they also share the information with and go forward. So that's it um, from me. The next bit actually on the agenda is to shift to the financials. So that, I'm also going to do that because Bill's overseas. Yay. Um, <laughs> so um, on the back of the sheet, uh, for those in the room, on the back of the sheet is the um, financial statement and financial position. Um, online, um, you'll get this. We'll, we'll send you out a link to the page with all the links on it afterwards. Uh, so, and on that page is our full performance report. So we get our, um, every year we get audited by Charity and Treat Integrity Audit. Uh, so we go through a formal um, audit review process um, to make sure that everything's up in line. Uh, so you can see this year through our financial performance for the financial year 2022 to 2023, Revenue was 545360 This was about 150 k more than we had the previous year. So we made a significant um, step forward. Expenses were 554450 and we just had a small deficit of about 9000 uh, The statement of our financial position, the assets are 117593 Liabilities were 7493 and the net assets were $110,100. So we've got about 100, 100K assets. So that just gives us a little bit of stability going forward. Um, but we're motivated to continue on and um, continuing to build our reserves. Uh, we're aiming for um, a reserve policy of six months of workable reserves to give us just a little bit more of a buffer. But these, these things take a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, to build up in really small amounts. So that's, that's where we're headed. Uh, so the performance report is at the bottom of the page that everyone will receive after today. Uh, if you have any questions at all, feel free to come back to me or just the general email and we can answer that for you as well. Um, once again, thanks to our funders too, um, who sit behind us with us. Uh, and that's it. We're just some little pictures. This is the team on the left. Um, when we were all together before Zakas left us, uh, when we were welcoming Terrell. So I think this might have been your first day, Terrell. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Good <laughs> Uh, and then we've got um, one of the ethnic hui's that we held um, with Kiara there from Wellington Community Fund. Uh, so we had some awesome people. Valerie's in the room, was in the room. Uh, she also was out and that with us that day, um, meeting with community groups and helping understand a little bit more about the funding process, which is a whole um, program that Zaha ran. And then the third one is, uh, that's Tuihana and I, who are the co-hosts of the Tato Tato podcast um, with Demetri Lohman, who was one of the people that we interviewed. We've done, I think, 17 interviews, so do encourage you to have a listen to them. Uh, people, all, they also make people cry, <laughs> uh, including us sometimes. <laughs> so um, so that's it for me. Well done. Well done. Well done. Um, thank you, Rochelle. You do what you do, so much of it. Um, uh, yes, we get very tired. I'm I'm conscious that we're um okay. we're a bit behind time. So the next um important step for us though is for our three board nominees for the Tangata Tiriti um trustees. We were going to have two minutes each to um to introduce yourselves. Um, there's a voting process online. Um, I'd like to start with um. We've had, do we still have? We've got Ben. We've got Ben. Okay. Yeah. Right, we'll start with Ben because he's waving at me. So Ben, yeah. if you could just take one minute to introduce yourself, that would be beautiful. There's a lovely profile of our three nominees on the website, so I encourage you to go and check them out and then vote um, online. But uh, 
Yeah, it's open to the voting. Um, we'll close on the 7th of November, which is next Friday. Yeah. Um, but Ben, over to you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, kia ora everyone. My name is Ben. I'm originally from Nigeria. I've been living in New Zealand for almost 10 years now. And I think um, the three best words that describe me are easygoing, calm and kind. I love working with people. I love just being with people out there in the community. And most of the people I work with describe me with the same exact words. So I think it's um, fair to say that. And um. I've been in the IT industry for about 15 years, so I'm very experienced, and I'm currently working as a cybersecurity analyst at Zero at the moment. And for me, being on the board here today is um is not just something to tick off the box as an achievement under my belt, because I see it as a as an opportunity to serve. Because I'm service oriented, I'm driven by a deep sense of responsibility to serve and elevate the communities that I'm part of. So that's why I'm here today. And um, I just want to say that I'll be honored if you voted for me as um, as the board member to join the team here at Fuye. Thank you so much. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Oh, kia ora tato. Thank you for having me. Ko rula te koinua. I mentioned earlier I'm based in Dunedin, have been in uh, Otipoti uh, for the last 10 years, um, originally came from Palestine, uh, where I completed my PhD here at the University of Otako, and worked uh, several jobs in the university as a research assistant, um, then later worked with the and New Zealand Red Cross when Dunedin became a resettlement area for two and a half years. And since then have been working for the Ministry of Education as a lead advisor here in Dunedin covering Otaku Southland. Uh, part of my return back to community service through volunteering um, as a board member for uh, interpreting New Zealand and as a board member for the refugee support group here in Dunedin, which is one of 28 uh, groups that are um, uh, have been approved as sponsors by uh, MB for a community sponsorship program for refugees, is a legacy and a history of serving my communities back in Palestine uh, both Gaza and the West Bank, where I worked. And that sense is what brought me back, wanting to uh, be there for the communities, whether it is um, seen or hidden, as we normally do it, without a lot of um, fuss and drama around it. Uh, I am quite interested in the sustainability of uh, the organizations that I serve, uh, have completed uh, several trainings in uh, risk management and uh, strategic leadership. And I would like to put this um, in service for Hawaii and the communities across Aotearoa that are served by Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now we have Tim. My leg's gone to sleep. So oh, <laughs> I'm Tim Antrick. I'm um, originally from Yorkshire in, in Europe. Um, I'm Tame Fertility. I'm Tawiwi and I'm a Taik. So, because I like alliteration too, so I can talk about identity. Support teams really does me nicely. Um, my involvement, it's, it's interesting hearing who is who year is 10 years old because I was involved in some of the forerunners, particularly when I was exec director of public libraries in New Zealand, which seems like a lifetime ago. Today I run um, Kayabataki of Hemisphere, which is a marketing and social change agency. We're 68% Māori owned and we've got increasing Māori staff, so for us it's a natural fit there. And we've also formed the Hui Hui of Takako, which is a social change collective with Māori, Pacifica and Asian social enterprises from across the country. Mm -hmm. So really keen to look at how we connect better with communities. 
My journey in governance began in the 1990s. That's showing how old I am. Um, since then, I've been chair of well Wellington YMCA Youth Line. I'm um, currently on the board of Achilles, um, and I work with an awful lot of charities and NGOs through my work and through our pro bono work that we do at the agency. Uh, we've recently been working with Wellington Pride Parade and the Billy Graham Youth Foundation. So for me, this is just another opportunity to take the skills that we might charge other people for and bring those skills into something like career. Um, and yeah, it's been exciting to see the 10 year journey from far. I think you can be part of the next part. Yeah, I think it's Thank you to our three amazing nominees, I have to say. Um, so really encourage you all to check out um, Tim, Ben and Rula's profiles and to vote online until the 7th of November. Please. Uh, is there only one space that they're competing for or do you have all three? <laughs> uh, I'd love to have three votes. One, one. Yes. Um, cool. So I think now we're moving into our acknowledgement. Yeah, so yes. Um, people. Yes. Yes. I was a confused on it. I was just a little bit of a bug. Yeah, it would be easiest if I explain it. Uh, so if you're a me if you're a, on the Mima Fanana Tonga network, so you can be a community group or an individual, uh, and you've signed up to us, which you have, Roger, if you're asking what question you have, <laughs> uh, then you are able to vote for this role. The way that you can vote is on the front page of the Huiye website. It's got an AGM little block on there. You can't miss it. Uh, you click on that down the bottom of the page. You'll see that there's the profiles of the three people. And then there's a little link there on how to vote. Is it only if you're a member? Only, only if you're a member of Huiye. Uh, so if you're in government or business, or a, you can't do that. But if you're a funder and you're a member of Huiye as a registered charity or in private society, you're able to do that. Uh, and voting is open till five o'clock next Friday. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're shifting into the goodbyes now. So we're, we're wrapping up. We're wrapping up. <laughs> um, well, it is my um, my great privilege to acknowledge you, Prabha Ravi. Perhaps you could come up here. Um, so Prabha and I, I guess, met when I started um, being a board member at WEAR. And um, Prabha, I think you've been with us for two years. Um, and Prabha has been a great support to me personally um, on my governance journey, it's my first governance role. Um, and it's just quite phenomenal when you look at all of the things that you do for your communities in particular, but for um, many communities in Aotearoa, um, exceptional uh, sense of service and commitment to the communities that you serve. So thank you for your um, strategic brain, your financial brain, which has been a great help, and also for the way that you craft good questions and challenge us, because um, we don't always agree. We're a very diverse board, as you can tell, um, which is which is the joy of it all. Um, but thank you for your contribution. It's it's mm -hmm. voluntary, and we so appreciate it. And we know that Prabha has a new grand, two grand grandchildren, um, who you are going to have some more time to spend with now, as you um, as you. Uh, depart from us, but I hope you stay in touch with all the great leaders that we are guests. Thank you. 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 Um, just wanted to say how incredible the last two years has been. Something that's been constant has been change. Um, we had to cope with so many different challenges during COVID, externally, internally, with our lots and lots of things that we were thinking and wanting to do. And uh, it's been an amazing journey that we collectively work together. And co-governance obviously has been a remarkable journey for us as well, just trying to navigate and understand. So I would say um, we had an amazing number of people around the board table, both Tangata Tiriti and Tangata Tanua. Obviously we had our differences, but we knew how to work together as well. We found a way to work together and come to consensus and make decisions in the process. And um, 
I would say a big, big thank you to Sarah and all the other board members as well, past and now, who are um, in the board right now. Because when I, Sarah and I started, there were other board members and uh, they moved on and we were the only two left, I think. And then you <laughs> <came>. <laughs> I, I <know>. you. sorry. <laughs> Just the three of us were left and new members came through. So it was another change that we had to grapple ourselves with, which is fantastic. And I would really like to acknowledge Rochelle. She's been an amazing chief executive and I've um, admired you and uh, really wondered how do you manage everything and your staff, incredible Kaimahi. Mm -hmm. Really, really good work, Ronia. Great to, I mean, I worked with Ronia many, many years ago and uh, reconnecting with Ronya in a different capacity was awesome. And Zakar, every single one of them in Puye are uh, a gem, I would say. That's how I would like to describe. It's just sad that I have to move on because I've got two grandchildren and I've got to travel to Melbourne often and I don't think I'm going to do justice to the role that mm. I'm going to be committing myself to and hence I had to put in my resignation. But hearing the three new candidates uh, who put their name forward. I had the uh, privilege of meeting Ben, uh, but hearing the other two as well, I think I'm not going to envy your role at all. It's going to be hard <laughs> to choose who's going to be the best one, but I wish uh, all three of you the very best and thank you very much for everything and also supporting me in this journey. I've been the challenger, but I think I've challenged for the right reasons as well. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, now the highlight of our day. Stand up, Shell. <laughs> I just sat down. This is the this is the highlight of our day right here. Everyone look. You look at you. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> she's an incredible human, right? Like when I first like I've only been here a year. I'm not sure if I said that earlier. Um but in that time, I when I first met Rochelle, I'm like, who is this lady? <laughs> what is this lady up to? And then I spent more time with her and I realized her heart is so big for this mahi. She is so clever, so clever, so strategic, so relentless <laughs> in her mahi. The way she works and the things that she does, she... She knows what needs to happen, and she makes sure she makes sure it's ha it happens. Um, we are very, very sad to see her go. She is again, again an incredible human. Um, but I genuinely know that you will go and create change where you, where you go, and I, I also know that you'll never leave. <laughs> um, because once once you're part of who you, you can't go. Yeah, it's like Hotel California. It is like Hotel California. <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to, I wanted to acknowledge you from the board, but uh, anyone else in the room, if you want to say something nice, a couple of weeks, please, please stand up and say something. She is a beautiful, or you can come and tell her yourself. I know I'm pretty sure everyone here and everyone online has been touched by Miss Rochelle. It was a terrible word. I can think of something else to say. In a not, in a not bad word. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to thank you. And we have a tonga for you from the board and the team. And this is your tonga. Give me a kiss. <laughs> and Michelle's going to, I'm not Michelle. And Andrea's going to share with us what, what this tonga is about. Can you mind our hands? Yeah, you go. Open it to show everyone. Yeah, come right here. Let me it up the light mic. So our, this tonga here for our beautiful tonga, Michelle. Now we hit our queen. Now we hit All the words have been said by my cutting here, uh, but this was this beautiful ponamu. It comes from the Arahura River. It's called Ro uh, Karaka Ponamu, and it's called a Koropepe. And so if you just hold that up and. Um, it's a, it's one and again it was a it was a wider thing that spoke to me, and in here all the detail and all of the the carving that my brother did, just represents really all of the intricate work that uh, mahi mahi aroha that Rochelle's done, and it was the 
when I pick a ponemu, it just talks to me straight away, and I, and it was the first one, the same with Saka. So um, that'll be your kaitiaki to look after mm -hmm. you wherever you go. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful piece, and it's a very different piece. So I thought it was you, but yeah, kia ora again. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure that I'm really kind of ready to, you know, say anything. Um, it's been, you know, four years of my life, three years of COVID, three years of that was COVID. Uh, I, I started six weeks before uh, the first lockdown. So it was kind of a crazy time to start. There was just Ronya and I. Ronya was 20 hours and I was 25 hours. So we were effectively one FTE when I started. Um, and I kind of arrived and we had been a little bit of a hiatus um, other than the work that Ronya was doing on the um, SDGs um, for a few months from the previous, when the previous manager had left. Um, and, but in a lot of ways for me, it was the perfect time to start because very quickly we got to see what are the needs, where are the gaps, um, what is going on. There was a drive of new collaboration happening across the sector. Uh, and we formed a really close click of about eight, uh, seven or eight CEs, uh, all based here in Te Whanganui Atara, uh, that have been my lifeline uh, through these four years. Uh, we catch up every month uh, over a drink, uh, even though I don't really drink, but <laughs> have something non-alcoholic. But it's been really awesome to have that kind of network and what it has done has made me wish that everybody had that. Mm -hmm. um, the team, uh, mainly Ronya, has been my like, right-hand person. She's looking teary-eyed, and that's going to set me off. <laughs> but um, Ronya is the the beacon of hope for the year. She has been the consistent person over the last five or six years who has held it together. Mm -hmm. With with us as CEs and managers coming and going, board members coming and going, Kaimahi coming and going, Ronya has been the consistent person. She is... Um, really my the cake to my icing. I'm the icing out in the front, um, being the front-facing person, but Ronya is the person who keeps us together. Uh, she is the caring heart that ticks all the boxes and makes sure everyone feels valued and heard and recognised. Um, sometimes when I'm just too busy out doing other things to do that. Uh, so she has not lost her heart in this place. Um, she slowly kind of incrementally put up her hours, uh, but without pressure from me, so totally in her option, because uh, she's got two beautiful little um, boys to care for. Um, so um, thank you. It's been amazing. Um, and I just said to her today, I don't really know how my life will be without Aronia. Mm -hmm. And because I feel like I need to take her everywhere I go now. Because she is uh, like a completely different sort of skill set to me, which is awesome. <laughs> so she is the one who um, has the organisational skills. But in, in my history of working, I've seen lots of people with organisational skills, but nobody with the heart that you have, um, both for all of us as individuals, um, but also for the community and all the people that you engage in all the different roles that you do. Thank you. It's been amazing. <laughs> Because these roles are not, uh, they're not a single role, right? Like, because we're such a small team mm -hmm. that um, that is never just about me. Like, if there was me and 20 people, you know, doing the mahi, then I, I could be much more of a sort of flower at the top. Uh, but I haven't stopped yet. Now I'm going on to Katarina. <laughs> So we looked for Kat's role for a year and we were really in a completely different position the year before we advertised twice. She was um, applied on the third round when he completely reworked the role. Um, and we didn't really know what we wanted. We sort of had a vision about how it could be. Um, but Kat, you have just over-delivered mm -hmm. in a really incredible way. You pour your heart and soul to this role. Thank you. Uh, like you arrived in April. We're now uh, October almost November, and just how much you've achieved in that time. Uh, the recent Takaha Funding Hui that you uh, and the team went up to on Friday is just an example of absolute uh, passion and commitment to your people, to funding change, to really flipping the model on funding, and that all comes from your head mm -hmm. and your heart. 
So thank you so much. Um, you're an absolute asset <laughs> as well. Uh, I know that you and Ronya um, have just connected and it's really exciting. I feel really good to be able to kind of hand on whoever takes on my role. Like you are both two amazing leaders uh, with so contributing so much. So thank you. Um, it's just amazing the number of new Māori um, and Pacific organisations signing up to us since you arrived. And that's uh, absolutely your visibility out there, your conversations, all that you've you've given to your role. Mm. Terrell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Terrell arrived recently, as she said, she's been here eight weeks. Uh, also, we uh, really needed a coordinator about four years ago. <laughs> uh, so she's our kairuruku. Um, and but we just were not funded to do that. So we just didn't have the funding to be able to do that. Uh, like ultimately we had to deliver at the community level, but as we grow and we need a lot more systems and processes. So Terrell's arrived with her fantastic skills, her passion to get us organized and um, in place. And it's been fabulous to have you. It's awesome that you could go to Takaha on Friday um, last week and really just connect at that community level. And I think, uh, you also bring that engagement and asset and passion for community with you. Uh, so again, another awesome Ronya, which is like organisations and, and community engagement. So this is my team. that I've had other, we had Abi with us as our comms advisor. We had Tessa. Um, we, we, Huya is really an organisation. People come and go, right? Nobody stays forever. So this is me shifting on. The goal when I arrived was that I could build who we are into a place that I could hand off and feel like it was in the right place. Mm -hmm. So we feel like that we had rebuilt our reputation, we had our funding, um, we had our reputation with government uh, and Phillips and philanthropic funding. Uh, we had built our network across the community. We had provided some valuable tools and skills and resources and knowledge. Uh, we had built connections both within our organisation and across those community groups themselves. And I feel really happy um, and satisfied that we have done that. Um, and to ask how I did it, as well as the team, uh, it's been a massive sacrifice for me personally. So it's huge, these roles. These roles are huge. Anybody, I just was in a um, con the Volunteering New Zealand conference yesterday talking to other CEs about them. They're huge because the mandate is this big and the resourcing is this big. Mm -hmm. And it's incredibly tough. It's many hours. It's a big commitment. The rest of my life has kind of disappeared. Mm -hmm. um, and I need to get that back. Uh, as well as my health. Uh, I've worked really hard this year on my house to see if I could do this role and keep my house together. Um, and uh, I did a vast improvement, but there's more to be done. So um, I don't know what the answer is. I was talking with someone yesterday about this. I know the answer is not to be isolated. Mm -hmm. I know the answer is to prioritise your health and your personal well-being over your um, over your community and not, not make too much of a sacrifice in that space. Um, but I know that um, all good things take a huge shift and effort and nothing that you ever want to achieve on your own um, is actually, uh, can just be formed easily. I know there's lots of people in this room, I'm looking at Kodrian, because Kodrian and I have worked together quite a lot and uh, and we interviewed him on the Tato Tato podcast and we talked about well-being as well. Like when you're driving forward change into new spaces, it takes so much effort. It's unbelievable and it's hard to really kind of define how much effort that takes. And um, there's no short and sharp way to do it. You can't just kind of sit back and just cruise along and think that you're actually going to drive change. That's just holding the status quo. You know, Aotearoa is in a immense place of change. We've got people also online who we know as well have driven that. Catherine, I can see up there, there's somebody who's worked really hard, Natalia. Like these people have given their lives for change and shift in where we are as a country. Um, and it is hard, it's really hard work. So I encourage all of you to reach out to those people that you know running organizations, make sure they're not isolated, make sure that they've got the support that they need, take them out for a coffee, uh, get online with them and just let them have a download. Uh, I mean, I've been really blessed that I've had people that I could download to, but not everybody has that. So um, thank you. Uh, I'm going to end. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I've got, I finish on the 10th of November. Um, I'm still not quite ready. I, I, I've been overseas for a month and I came back sort of feeling like I was just getting back into my job. Um, but uh, I feel like it is the right time to go. It's the right time to go. It's the right time for the next generation to come through. There's incredible leaders in their 30s and 40s now. We see this right here with our co-chairs coming through. Uh, there's like new generations of really diverse amazing incredible leaders coming through and it's time for that it's time for the kind of you know kakiha middle-aged middle-class woman like me to step aside and allow that to happen we have to create space for those new people coming through so um kia ora i um will absolutely wear this with pride thank you mm -hmm. thank you andrea mm -hmm. um it will always sit with me and remind me of this amazing time um, always when you leave a job you're never quite sure whether it is the right time if you're leaving a good circumstance whether it is the right time or the bad time but I think it is the right time but um, I will I will have to kind of slowly tune myself um, out from the Zuyi Mahi and stay in contact anyway with everybody so kia ora everyone <laughs> We don't plan anything. But um, <laughs> on behalf of the team, I just want to say thank you so much for building such a solid foundation. Even though I've been in the team since April this year, honestly, when I stepped in, Saka told me, he was like, it took me six months to understand what we actually do. And it literally did take me six months to understand what we actually do because we have got such a huge mandate. Our um, vision is flourishing communities and weaving and connecting voices so that our hapu, iwi and our community can do what they do best. And we're a team of four and I'm like, how on earth is this possible? And I think why it's possible is because we had a leader who trusted in us stuff and kaimahi and um, believed in us. And whatever ideas we came up with or initiatives that we came up with, she gave us full control to, you know, jump on top of that and do what we do. And um, I, and I think that's such a valuable skill to have as a leader mm -hmm. because you're literally just trusting in your people and bringing out their best so that they could do what they do best so I just want to say thank you so much mm -hmm. it was gutting when <laughs> you gave us the news um, but I, I understand you know that you have to um, think about yourself and take care of your whole order well-being but I just want to say thank you so much for setting us up for success, success. even um noticing when we're all feeling run down and tired and allowing us to take a week off you know those little things just mean a lot and um I know you're always going to be in the background and yeah so just on behalf of the team I just want to say thank you oh. I, I feel like I need to say something <laughs> otherwise people look at me like, why is she not saying anything? <laughs> um, but not quite sure I'm not quite sure I can kind of put into words kind of the last four years that we've had together and um, I wasn't actually teary eyed when I'm sitting there I'm definitely now <laughs> um, and yeah I think um, just the yeah you what you were saying about this big heart that's really you're very stern sometimes um, but actually in a really, really compassionate way. And and I think that's also why um, why our relationships with people outside of the organization have flourished so much is because actually they can see a really good friend, a, a good and constructive friend in you as well. Um, I think personally for me, you've been a real rock. Um, I know you just talked a lot about me actually, but it was about you. <laughs> um, and um, and I think it was a real. You were the exact person and personality that Huya needed at the time. Um, I certainly wasn't ready to step into that role at the time, and um, and I know that I knew that actually what we needed was somebody with a really big vision to mm. what Huya could could be, and um, and you brought that. But also you've made um you've made me really value 
my contributions and um and also you make sure I never get bored. <laughs> um and and moving me from one role to another to another. <laughs> so, okay, that was great. That was really right. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I just really want to thank you, Rochelle, for everything, um, for all your love and all your amazing words of wisdom and your open heart and your open door. I know I could always come and see you on your in Petoni and knock on your door whenever I needed to. So I just wanted to thank you for my bottom of heart. <laughs> Oh, she comes back. I'll be so short and sweet. thank you so much for many things. Um, Yamahinoe Kiaku Moto Totoko, Moto Aroha, Moto Afi. Um, I think for me, coming from the public sector literally since my first job, um, it's been really enlightening and empowering to work with such a personality like yours. Um, thank you for reigniting my passion, allowing me to harness my drive and do what I do best, um, and giving us the space, like Katarina and Ronya said, to, um, to just, yeah, to, to be who we are for all of the right reasons. Um, there's not always a process or a protocol to, to everything, but being able to do it with a team and a collective that believe in your vision, I think is extremely inspiring. So thank you so much for um, opening this space to me. And, and although it's been a short time, it's been a great time. So <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to wrap us up. By I mean, Andrew's going to wrap us up. How do you like the name? You're ready to be wrapped up? Yeah, ready to be wrapped up. <laughs> Uh, Amen. Peace with you Kilda. Yeah, long way over. Um, can we, can we have someone just to quietly?